Hi, welcome to uh, Liquored Up Movie Reviews. Today, we're going to be talking about the movie The Cook-Off. Uh, this movie was directed by Catherine Mitchin and Guy Shalom. Although it was released on November 17, 2017, it had been shelved for 10 years, so pretty much they just set it aside when they made it 10 years ago. Um, it was based on the book The Girl Genius Guide to Life, which was written by Catherine Mitchin. I wish that I had looked at reviews or, you know, even watched a video of somebody talking about it who had seen it, you know, because this only got a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not so good. Um, they sold the movie as starring Melissa McCarthy, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but that kind of pissed me off a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, it's a comedy mockumentary about amateur chefs competing in a competition cook-off to win a million dollars. Was a shit movie. Okay? I would not recommend this to anyone. Honestly, don't waste your fucking money on it. The plot itself was all over the fucking place, okay? They made it to where there was no actual main characters at all because you seen from everybody's point of point of view you know even the <clears throat> camera people that um were you know recording the event and whatnot you know reporting you even seen like a side thing between those two you know and then you have all the judges and they go into you know the judges points of view and like it's just all over the fucking place and it looked it made it look like an amateur was do like I could make a fucking better movie you know what I'm saying and I've never made a fucking movie in my life so like even the, the drama felt very forced no 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 I'll, I'll, no I'll, uh, I'll take the bet I'll take the roll away bet I don't mind sleeping in the roll there is no way as a gentleman I am going to climb in bed with you with what I want to do to you in front of your sister. So I had better, for everybody's safety, I had better just take that roll over the bed. We could put the Bible between Do you them. remember the story of the little boy in the sucker cocktail? Yeah. He mixing in the eggs. Well, it's a good story, and it's right for our relationship. Uh, it's mixing in the eggs, and the little boy tries to eat them. No weight. Uh, flour, he tries to eat. No weight. The sugar. No weight. No weight. Wait till the sucker cocktail is ready. And I want to wait in our relationship till that sucker kaka is ready. Well, I'm willing to wait for the sucker kaka if you are willing to wait for the sucker kaka. I have to wait. <clears throat> like, you could tell it was not real. And the cast was an array of, like, really good actors. You know, they had um, the guy from The Love Boat. Um, a couple people I've seen quite a bit. Um one of the contestants i believe is a character on reno 911 you know they have that's that's why i was really surprised at how shitty this movie was um none of the characters were actually re relatable you know none of them felt like you could connect with them because they were off the wall characters Wow, the excitement is palpable with these ladies today. You know, actually, can, can you hear me without oh, the mic? Yeah, just sitting right here. I guess so. All right. Okay. All right. Sex Suarez is a Lutheran-based company. These are Lutheran marital aids. These products are for marrieds only. So, a little bit of a gotta tell the truth here. Pauline and I actually don't use the product. I was not even allowed to look at the product. I'm Sharon Soka. And this is my sister, Pauline. Uh, Pauline Solfes. Well, you know, this is the first time in the history of the Van Ruffles Farm cook-off, which started in 1945. This is the first time there have ever been two sisters, both finalists. It, we, it, we don't like to say competing, because we're not competing. All the streams of Egypt can <laughs> Thy mother and father, Sister Reyes. Now, I'd like to honor my mother. I'd like you all to know 
that Sister Ladybug Briggs, our very own Sister Ladybug Briggs, has just been chosen as a finalist in the Van Rooker Farms cook-off. Like manna from heaven, her biscuits will deliver us. <laughs> the Lord delivered 5,000 with the loaves and fishes. Well, she about to build a <laughs> man. My name is Ladybug Briggs. The reason they call me Ladybug is because I love Ladybugs. Now, don't get the fingernails with the Band-Aids on them because these are weak and I'm using the Band-Aids to hold them on. I uh, love Ladybugs because they brand me luck. Just like they're going to bring me for this cooking competition on the, uh, the, the uh, for the vet. Being a mother is the hardest job ever. It's the only thing rewarding. probably harder is but selling insurance. I don't know if you're familiar with the insurance game, but it is brutal. I wasn't in Vietnam, I was too young, but it's just like that. It's nuts. Half the time I'm selling, half the time I'm explaining it to my own staff. It's, yeah. No, nutty. yeah, 95. I'm a finalist. <laughs> it's called a multi layered and. Not only was I a finalist, but I won the entire contest just a, some years ago. And uh, now. 24 years ago. It really wasn't 24 years ago. Please, darling, I'm talking. And uh, we are excited because she's going to continue the legacy. We have Doe in the name. I'm sorry? Doe Do is in the name. Oh, that's cute. My recipe is a luscious lemon lime crumble pie. If I were to win a million dollars, I might give some of the money to my mother. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Right. <laughs> Every single person was off the wall character. In in doing this, you know, not just the drama felt forced, but the comedy felt a little forced as well. Now don't get me wrong, I I'm more of a horror fan, okay? But I like comedy as well. Uh, I mean I watch Will Ferrell movies, so I like stupid comedy. This is, like, really stupid comedy, okay? Not funny at all. Like, I didn't laugh the entire time I watched it. Also, they made the ending pretty fucking obvious. Every chance they got, they said, Oh, if this person wins, you know, I'm gonna sprout wings and fly to Canada. Or, you know, just something stupid like that. But it was like, every ten minutes, they would say something like that for the contestant that actually won. It was like, obviously, this person's gonna win because they're being so dramatic at the fact that they won't win. You know what I'm saying? You have greater chances of me putting on wooden shoes right now and dancing until they burst the flame. Yeah. She's going to win the cook-off. Sharon! Hello. What's up, bro? This just because you, because I could have helped you, that was all. I just was a little... It's a vegetable <laughs> dish. It is, it is cream corn through the lactose and salt. It's a good idea. Uh, she's not just going to win, you know. I actually know that it's my destiny to win because I had a, a vision that I would win the Venerable's Farm cook-off. So that's something we both know. Right. The Pope is the example I always give. I think the Pope is the kind of guy to be like, you know, I'm probably not going to be an insurance salesman. I'm probably going to be like the pool person, you know. So that's what happened to me, is I just knew that this is what's going to happen. No, I'm sorry, you're, you're uh, you know, less than zero chance of winning because I've never been a festival winner. The odds of like a meteor like crashing down into the group and landing directly on your head. Like Sharon has calculated the odds of her sister Colleen winning. Thank you. I'm here, okay? I'm here. That's a big thing for me, okay? I know. You're the show, the show of the family. I'm the workhorse. But I got here, okay? Why are you attacking me? This is like, this is my, 
my moment in the show is every something. Uh, if that happens, I will probably sprout wings from my bottom and fly out of your butt first, okay? That's not going to happen. I'm just questioning the wisdom of fashionizing. Another thing that really got to me was they, <clears throat> they pulled out stereotypes for gays, white people, and black people. And whereas sometimes that would be funny, but the entire fucking movie was one big fucking stereotype. It was so ridiculous. Like, all the white people were, you know, like peppy and just, oh, I'm rich, that's why I'm doing this, you know, blah, blah, blah. The black people... One of them literally referred to themselves as being Aunt Jemima and Mrs. Buttersworth because they were, you know, famous African-American cooks. Not even fucking joking. There's uh, two gay guys, not counting the judge because, I mean, apparently that's obvious. Um, one of them was closeted and the other one just didn't talk about it. Um, the one that was closeted was taken to a gay bar by the one that just didn't talk about it. And in there, he was like, oh, I bet you, I bet you, uh, like Barbara Streisand. Oh, I knew my first Streisand before I even knew how to talk. Like, that's a fucking stereotype. Just because you're, you like a little pee-pee up the butt doesn't mean you like Barbara Streisand. Okay. You could like playing Call of Duty and fucking war movies and, you know, playing basketball and all sorts of shit and still be gay. You see how that's a fucked up stereotype there? So like, they forced these stereotypes so hard that it literally ruined the comedy of it. So whereas sometimes that shit would be funny, you know, like, oh look, they're making fun of the white people. You know, I would laugh at that, but they forced it so fucking hard throughout the whole movie that it just wasn't funny. Um, Melissa McCarthy had four minutes, four minutes of fame in this fucking movie, and that's what made me even more mad, was because they, again, they sold her as being the main character, dead center of the, of the cover. All right, I think I have the cover sitting here somewhere. Look at that. Dead center of the cover, okay? Four minutes. She wasn't even a main character. She showed up late to the competition and then was disqualified from the competition because she fell and her food touched the ground. No fucking joke. And... You know, every movie I've seen Melissa McCarthy in, even, you know, for a couple minutes, she's, you know, she's randomly guest starred in movies, you know, just little short glimpses. And even then, she was funny. She's like the white person's Medea. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to make her not funny. This movie made her not funny. All around... I would avoid this movie. I would avoid buying it. Um, it's a fucking disgrace. Whoever made it should feel really shitty about themselves. And definitely not fucking make another movie. That is for fucking sure. I don't uh, know too much about Guy Shalom. I've never heard of anything else that he's ever made. But he should probably not make any more. Make sure you tune in to my next movie review, which will be on the movie The Plague, which is a horror movie. My favorite. See you next time.